Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to a new series that's going to be featuring on my YouTube channel and it's all about the renovations that we have planned for our home. Hello, but if you're not, then welcome back and welcome to what? Well, sorry if you can hear Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> Come here. Firstly, I'm going to introduce myself and this is Maggie. So if you are new and you've just clicked on this video, then this is Maggie. She's our Labrador. Wow. <laughs> Very tired. And my name is Luke and behind the camera is Zara. We bought this house last year and we completed it at the end of October. And we bought this house because we really loved the bones of it, but it's a complete blank canvas and if you've watched the moving vlogs and certain videos up until now you'll know that there is so much that we have planned for this house but I've never put it in a series so this first video I'm going to talk about everything that we have planned to change and renovate in the living room and it's going to be starting this month which is very exciting. So in this series I'm going to be covering everything that we want to do to the living room, library, kitchen, hallway, bathrooms, extensions, and garden. I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, and bedrooms, of course. So essentially the whole house, but it will be broken up into series. So we're going to kick off because this is where we spend a lot of our time. So this is the living room and library room. So first things first, we're going to talk about paint and moulding. In this living room, it's north facing. However, we also get south facing light coming through it as well because the previous owners decided to open up and add a half side return. So it's not a full side return, but it's enough to allow some south face and light into the living room, which, and that is a real advantage because it allows us to use some darker colors and really play with textures in this living room. So we bought this new sofa in mind that we were gonna do something dark and colorful on the walls. So we've ordered a lot of paint cards and samples. We've got some fire on ball. I've spoke about this in a previous video, coarse paints and Paint and Paper Library London. We've also got some Dulux samples as well, and I think we might have a look at some other options too. So we haven't decided anything yet, but we are thinking red. Now, I know a lot of people left comments before saying, um, it's a really bold color, you might live to regret it, it might feel quite dark, but we think we've come up with a clever solution on how to incorporate the red, which is a traditional color in the Victorian property, whilst also balancing out the brightness and not having it drown the room. So, on the walls, we're thinking we're going to do a picture reel. Now, again, picture reel is a typical office property. The walls are really good, solid walls. We don't need to do anything to them. They don't need replastering. We just need to add some, some character back into it. So the mouldings are going to stay the same in the Corbin. And um, we've hung a picture just to add something on the walls, but obviously that might not stay there. But the idea is that we will do a really rich, luxurious red on the wall, but then do a picture reel and then have a white to continue up. So it will brighten and freshen up the room whilst also elongating the already incredibly tall ceilings. As I don't even know how tall these ceilings are, but I mean, I'm six foot. So They're nine even... foot, because I measured for the Christmas tree. Nine foot? Mm. No, they are, because that's how we got a nine foot Christmas tree. So that's the plan, we're gonna be colour drenching, but also having brighter, clearer, crisp accents. So things like paintwork will be staying white, and I'm gonna come on to other ways that we will brighten the room. So that's paintwork. Paneling, we're gonna be adding some crown moulding to the walls. Um, we don't know on what design, we don't know if we're gonna be doing it or not, but that's something that we kind of considered. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is removing this door. Now, <laughs> There are a lot of options when it comes to reconfiguring a living room, so we can move the bar out of the way. We found ourselves not using this door because access into the living room, you have from the kitchen, from the hallway, you also have a door through here, and then also, and then back through here. So it just feels completely silly to have an extra door and this kind of like void of wasted space, so. Particularly when this is open, there's sorry, no doors. When the door's open as well, like it, the heat gets out, so it's a, it is a warm home and it will definitely be warmer with things that we're gonna do, but 
It just feels like a redundant door, so we're going to remove this door, well, we're going to box it in and plaster over it. And in doing so, we'll, you, we can use this space. So the sofa will be going back against the wall and the radiators will be getting changed to column radiators. So a real traditional, they won't be cast iron because they're really expensive, but we will be moving the placement of this radiator to that corner wall. So away from the window, so it can heat the room in a better way and we can push the sofa back to just to really maximise the space because whilst this is a generous size living room, it's not massive. And obviously when we've got people round, it's just nice to have that extra bit of space. It's only, I don't know, maybe like a couple of inches in depth, but it will really make a big difference. Um, and obviously we could go for a um, taller radiator if we wanted to, but I think we're just going to stick with a kind of like a mid-height one. So that's some structural work that we're going to do on this side. And then comes on to the main part, which is probably going to eat up a lot of our budget. Now we question whether we're going to change the windows and whilst they're not perfect and probably not authentic in the sense that sash windows are better, we're just going to stick with them because it's so, so expensive to replace windows and they're watertight, they work, they're just not really to our taste. But what we are going to do is install some shutters. So since we moved in, we had these um, lovely curtains fitted. They're a gorgeous, thick material and they're thermal insulated as well, so they really, really keep the heat in. However, because it's a bare window and we didn't put it on a track, they're really quite difficult to close. They do close up to a certain point, but what we're going to do is install some Venetian shutters. Now, I think they're called plantation shutters sometimes, and we don't know if we're going to do full height. I think we will. But what we'll probably end up doing is just keeping the bottom ones closed and the top ones fully open, but obviously with the slats open for daylight. So it adds a bit more privacy, obviously keeps the heat in a bit better, and also just really in keeping because a lot of people on the street have shutters. So that's the plan, but we love the brass curtain rail, we love the curtains. We specifically went for a really neutral um, textured weave fabric for the reason that it goes with everything, and if we decide to change the colour of the walls, we can. Other than that, furniture staying the same, obviously keeping the sofa, the side table, the lamp. Now you remember this ottoman, <laughs> Maggie likes the smell of this fabric, don't you? So this was actually a gift from Zara's aunt and what we think we're going to do is change out the rug in here and reupholster this ottoman <laughs> because uh, we I actually found this ottoman in a dumpster, believe it or not, and uh, it's a really great ottoman. I think they're about £600 to buy new from the company. And there was nothing wrong with it, we gave it a clean. But I think we're going to reupholster it in this really nice, almost like a 1920s fabric. We don't know on what side we're going to do it on. We don't know whether it will be the lighter or darker. Or whether we'll use this fabric at all. We might paint the room and decide that it's not the right colour or the right texture, but we really, really like it. And if not, we could maybe get some cushions made out of it or something. So, really gorgeous fabric. Hello, Mikey. Hi. Also talking about radiators, we're also going to install another radiator under the window bay here. Obviously this is where the Christmas tree goes, so on Christmas we will turn off the radiator, but it will just allow for some extra heat into the living room. You're like a paid actor, you're right on cue and I love that for you. The day I'm filming this, we actually picked up some Billy bookcases off of Facebook Marketplace. Zara found them last night for free. I'm, I'm just so unbelievably happy. The seller was so local to us, he was having some renovation work done and they were for free. So, we are going to be removing this unit and installing four Billy bookcases across the living room and second living room slash library. Now, this TV is controversial <laughs> because I personally don't like TVs. Now, we do watch TV programs, we watch movies in here. This is a living room as well as a TV room and it is a big TV and you can get picture TVs, you can get frame TVs, but this is a TV from Sky and it's brilliant because everything's built in so you don't need a dish. We do have a smaller one upstairs and I'm kind of toying with the idea, but I just don't know. I just don't know, neither does Zara, about whether or not we put the TV in this alcove and have a huge mirror here. Now that would be more practical, but having the TV off centre might not work, so we don't know, we need to measure up, we need to figure out. It probably will end up staying here, but it's something to think about, for sure. Fireplace? It's also a TV and it's a living room. It is. Which it is, is just, the purpose of the room is to watch television. I know, I just really don't like the first thing you walk in, you're like, bam! But, in my mind, I'm thinking, 
if we do paint the walls, it might not be as contrasted. Anyway, fireplace. Currently, it's a aesthetic fireplace. It's not plumbed in. Uh, plumbed in, it's not wider, like it doesn't have gas to it. And we need to get the flue checked. But the plan is that we're going to repurpose this inner fireplace. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if it's allowed, we're going to get a log burner installed. Now, there are some certain loopholes that you need to jump through. If you want to get a log burner installed, you obviously need to get your flu checked and you need to check if you can actually have one in your property. But I think we'll be able to because there's a few people on the street that do have them. But we will not be getting rid of this fireplace because it's so, so lovely. So we're going to keep the hearth. No, keep the um, fire surround, sorry. Probably change the hearth, although I do actually quite like the black, but maybe tile the inner in like a kind of Victorian tile and then obviously set the log burner in the fireplace. This will be moving into the library next door, so we will be talking about that in just a second. But the only other thing that we really, really want to do in this space is change up the lighting and add some more warmth because we have the ceiling rose in the ceiling, so that will obviously be a really beautiful light fixture. We also have these pendant lights, which are quite hard to see. It's probably the detail I want to show you. This pen, um, the pendant wall scones, I think you call them. We inherited these when we moved in. We don't use them. They do work. Let me see if I can turn it on. Here we go. Oh, and a really lovely white bulb. It's horrid. Really not very nice. Whilst they're, you know, not particularly offensive, we will be using that electric source to incorporate in the bookcases. So. It's a really great way that the cables are already chased in. We're just kind of rewiring them to where we need them. Because you can only turn them on. From down there. So you need we, to turn on here. We need to, so yeah, replaster <laughs> might need to happen if they do have to somehow take the cable in through the wall, but we will figure that out. It's fine. The only other thing in here that we will be doing as well, but that won't be happening next month, is the floor. Now this is a solid wood floor and it seemed really good Nick. There are some expansion gaps and where they've installed it, it's not amazing but again it's such a good saving that this is already done. But like I say there are scuffs and it does have a slightly orangey yellow tinge to it whether that's because of sun bleaching or whether or not that's just the actual stain of it but it's got a really nice grain and it's solid and it just seems like so wasteful to get rid of its store. The plan will be is that we can get a belt sander in here and sand it back ever so lightly and put a slightly darker stain on it to neutralise the orange and then pop a um, finishing gloss on it so it will have a slight more traditional feel to it but it will be more darker, more rich, more um, just like textured and nice rather than the slightly orange hue that we have. I don't think I've forgot anything in here. It sounds like a lot. But the great thing is my stepdad is coming to London and he is here for a working week. So we're going to really put him to use and uh, I really, really feel confident this room is going to completely transform into a beautiful space. It's already beautiful, but I feel like it's going to be even more cosy. Anyway, why don't you come on through to the second library, living room. Second library, second living room library. So you're now in our... I'd say it's probably one of the most multifunctional rooms that we have because it doesn't have a definitive name. It is... The living room off of the main living room, it's currently our library slash piano room, which to Zara's dismay. Traditionally would have been a dining room. Traditionally would have been a dining room, exactly. So, as you know, we have a kitchen diner and that is something that I will come on to in a future video. But this won't ever be a dining room. This is going to remain as a second living room extension. So, currently we have these Billy bookcases here. So this will give you a really good idea of what the bookcases will look like next door. Obviously, we will be adding cabinetry and doors to the ones next door for just to hide things. But here, I like the idea that we have books. I like the concept that we read and it's not just something for like decoration. We, you know, we haven't read all of these books, but we read a lot of them. The cookbooks down here we use. So what we're going to do is get these raised off of the ground um, and then kind of build them in with some joinery. Extend them higher and add um, the lighting through the top to add a picture light so really traditional uh, library lights have like a brass lighting and also maybe we can wire some lighting through the bookcase as well so they're just like really built in and bespoke but for a fraction of the cost now some of you who were eagle eyes noticed that i was talking about potentially a second fireplace now that is hollow and that is solid so 
there is a potential that there is an orphan that has been, in fact, I'm pretty sure it has been blocked off. Now, this wouldn't be an active flu, but from the fireplace in the living room, we'd be taking it in and out and installing it in here to just add to that traditional feel. You've got your armchairs wrapped around the fireplace and it's just going to really have that cohesive, just warm, snug feeling that we love in this room. You know, it's not a highly used room, but I think once we make it cosy, we'll naturally have the inclination to sit here with a book, a cup of tea, coffee, and just sit and enjoy. Because at the minute, I'm not doing that. Are you, do you feel like you do that often? No. I, I sit like, here from waiting for something. Yeah, it feels like a... Waiting room. A waiting room, like a through room. Some people, when they're doing house renovations, decide to use this as part of their utility room, or they eat in this as part of a kitchen space, and I get it, because it's, it can be a redundant room. If a family did buy this house from us in years to come, I presume they'd make this like a playroom. Could be an office, so it's functional, it's multifunctional. Anyway, so second bookcase we're going to acquire. There are a couple on Marketplace, so hopefully we can get a second one of these. So we're going to flip these round. So this is going to be the bookcase, and this is going to become our bar, which is behind you currently. It's a well-stocked bar. Let me pop a light on because it's got a bit dark. The weather in London has not been great. There we are. So this is our bar car. I've had this in... 2018, um, I bought this when we lived in a flat when I first moved in with Zara and it's great, it's on wheels, it's lasted us a while but it's quite a bulky piece of furniture and I'm really trying to drink less <laughs> moving forward in my life so this will all be put away in a cupboard but the nice pieces like the decanters and the cocktail shakers, we really want to show that off so the idea is that they will swap around so we'll have a bar installed in this side, which will naturally lead on to the kitchen. So you can come through to the kitchen, from the kitchen, and grab some glasses or a shaker. And we're going to add some glass holders in here just to really make it feel the spork again. And obviously the floor in here will be changing as well. We'll be sanding throughout. Now this doorway is a bit of a strange one because... It's an open doorway and it's quite tricky because it means the heat can really escape when you come through. So I had thought so hard about this and so had Zara about what the best use of space was. Do we block it up? Do we, you know, fill in this wall so we've got two really big rooms and we could obviously use this to extend the bookcases and obviously that means on the other side for the kitchen that's a, a wall we can use. But I think it would really interrupt the floor of the house, so we decided against that. And also for light reasons as well, it would make this room very dark. So, my stepdad had the idea that why don't you add doors to it that you can close off on an evening when you want to snug down and just feel really cosy. But then, when you want to have the floor, you can just open them up. So, double French doors, which I think is a brilliant idea and we didn't really think of that. They will be glass, I think, purely just from a design perspective that the light can still come through but also it will stop the heat loss. So that's an idea. And the kind of door that we want is some kind of like dark crystal aluminium style with, it will do modern touches with the traditional finish. So um, that's the plan. And the only other door that we'll be changing here is this one. Because we'll be losing the living room door, this is gonna be the main door from the hallway into the living room, dining room. And obviously we won't be blocking off the hallway door through to the kitchen. So there's a really nice circular floor that we're gonna keep, but this door, I think what we will actually end up doing is getting another glass crystal door for this. So the light from the hallway can flood through and vice versa, so it can all interchange and keep that brightness. But obviously it will act as a door so we can close it off, keep the heat in, keep my heat where to be. And then, yeah, the door, none, none of the doors close but well in this house. So that's something we need to work on. And obviously the bar car will be gone, piano will move over, and then this radiator, again, we will be changing for a black column radiator. I get a lot of people saying, don't have your piano near the radiator. This is actually turned off, so this doesn't produce any heat at all, which is makes this room, again, a little bit cold. So the plan would be the piano will move onto this wall, and we'll pop a radiator on this wall here, just to have the heat bounce through. And that is pretty much everything for this space. It sounds like a lot, it's doable. It will of course be in stages. We won't be doing it all at once, but in the next couple of weeks, we will be buying building materials, wood, carpentry supplies, and 
they will be Project Living Room Library, which I'm very excited about. So let me know your thoughts. Please, please, please do bear in mind that this is our first home and we are young and we're going to make mistakes. And um, yeah, any supportive comments, any comments or suggestions are more than welcome. But let's keep it a positive space. <laughs> Every home is different, every taste is different, and what we love, someone else might not enjoy. So any tips or tricks or educated suggestions, money saving tips, please leave them in the comments because I'm sure other people will find them useful. I'm also gonna link the empty house tour and the moving vlogs down below so you can see our home as an empty shell and the way we've kind of furnished it up until now. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Do stay tuned because some work's gonna be happening very soon. Um, beyond excited. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Lots of love to you all. Take care and I'll catch you all very soon. Bye for now.